Hello everyone, this is Bradley. Today we are going to talk about random color in Blender. One thing that I have to mention first is that in this tutorial I'm using a procedural model that I've created using animation nodes. But in this tutorial you do not need animation nodes at all to do the work for you. You do not need to download it or know anything about it. But of course, if you are interested in this model, you can go to right upper corner where it shows a link to the tutorial or you can go to the link in the description, or you can just go to my channel and look for plasma animation. All of these methods will do the work for you. But again, the topic of this tutorial is to teach you about the random color. So let's firstly disable the volumes and uh, some the sphere. So the problem we are having in this model is I have multiple spines. Each of them are individual objects. And I want to assign each of them with a different color. Uh, obviously, I'm not going to create 1000 textures and assign the 1000 of them to have a different color. Instead, I want to use a single shader, a single plasma shader, which has been used 65 times to assign them different color. The way I do is going to use a object info node. So by using this node, and it has a random socket, for each different object, it have a random number ranging from 0 to 1. And if I input this number into the factor of color ramp, it will basically pick up a color within this ramp and output that to the sh shader. And in this case, it's emission shader, so it can shine in the dark. So this is the whole point. But uh, the issue comes is how can I actually change the seed? And the answer comes from the discussion between developer Omar and Christ P, who is also a tutorialist. So they basically use the white noise to do the work. So let's simply take a look with the white noise. So I now I have a plane and which has been assigned with a white noise noise, noise texture. You can see uh, this is very interesting note, it only contains a vector. And if you just change the vector, then the plane just flash. And if you put a UV mapping node along with texture coordinates, then instantaneously you can see white noises. And no matter how you magnify that, um, it's still small. And of course, you don't have any option to, uh, as size so that you can make the white noise larger. It's just infinitely small noises. So how can we actually use this? Or what does it actually mean? Uh, you can know more. Firstly, you can know more information from the menu. But what I can say is for each location is a position within a list. And in this list, all the numbers range from 0 to 1, like from black to white. And if you change the look, and if you think about this, and this actually answers the questions, because our random number also ranges from 0 to 1. So if we put this number, combine x, y, z, and we take a white noise. So if we change the vector of this white noise, then we are offsetting the entire list, uh, which means we are changing the seed, actually. So after this moment, I think this is very cool. And this is how we actually change the seed. But do you think the entire point of this tutorial is to copy other people's idea? Actually, no, because this method is very good for a kind of um, static scene. So if you change the seed, then everything has been changed. The color of this spline can be different, can be completely different from what it, has, it was previously. But if I'm doing an animation, I probably want to have a more ease transition, especially I'm really creating a color ramp, which is loops throughout. So how can, I, how can I actually loop this color? So initially a spline should be red and then orange, then yellow, and then green, and then blue, and so on and so forth. So how can I actually loop this number? In this case, we actually do not need to use white noise texture combine X, Y, Z. The idea is pretty simple. Um, the mathematical idea is if I can input 1.1, um, 1 .1, 
and it should loop back to 0 0.1 and this is what I'm looking for so how can we do this mathematically uh, we are going to use a function which is called a module uh, let's see the module yeah you can also use a function actually at, at this moment they do not really look this different so for the modular function, we have value A and value B. What we can know, um, so basically the math function looks like I have an A and divided by B. And the final output is the number here, is number at the end of this fraction. So assume if I'm inputting 3 and I the value B is 2 so the output will be 1 but if I'm inputting 4 then you can see the final output is 0 and if we go back to 5 if we go to 5 then the output is again 1 so you can see there is a loop occurs so what it means is soon as if you use modulo it, firstly it will loop Secondly, the number will never be larger than the value b. And this is the entire point of this math function. So if in this case, because I want all the numbers um, cycle between 0 and 1, so I just put this value as 1. And I'm going to use another math function, it just, it just add in numbers, whichever number you add. And now, uh, we have random colors, but we also have a module. So if you just uh, slightly increase the number, you can see you have a more ease transition of, the, of all these colors, which is very cool. And uh, I think basically this is done. Another thing I may want to mention is how can I actually animate this? Of course, you can go to the shader and keyframe all these values. So you just select this shader and hit just hit I. You can see the keyframes being appear but uh, sometimes uh, this is also another procedure like you just have to use keyframes there's another way to do this however is you just uh, create another node and uh, divide it by certain number uh, like 60s and you just uh, select the value a and type your hashtag frame then it will create a driver so in frame one this value will be one in frame 2, the value will be 2. So it basically it shows the frame number, which is very straightforward. The reason I'm going to use a division, because if I'm just changing 1 to 2, it's actually a lot, a lot of work for the module. So, but I want to a kind of more a, a changing fraction. So if I'm just changing a lot, then it will speed up the entire transition. And finally, just to see why. <laughs> So I want a slower transition and that's why I'm putting this number into the value B so that you can easily change all these kind of um, the end of frames like uh, sometimes I want 5,000 frames and I just go to 5,000 it's, it's procedurally changing so you don't need to do anything with the keyframes you just uh, manipulate this division number so you can know the, the rate of change in this number and I think this is done uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and I'll probably see you next time. Bye bye.